one of the school districts is uh, Gridley Unified School District, which has a population similar to what you would find in South Chico in terms of the ethnic makeup and income levels and, and some of the community resources available. And in that school district, we found 52%, 52% of the kids in upper elementary were above a healthy weight for their age, which was way higher than the national average, which for a child that age would be about 30%. 52% significantly elevated. And we also found that of uh, the Hispanic kids, 25% or a quarter of those kids were positive for acanthosis nigricans, which is a risk factor for diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Average age of those children was 10. And with a quarter of those Hispanic children being positive for this risk factor, and with 52% of them being overweight, you put that together and you've got a time bomb. And we moved into Thermalito School District in response to a request by that school nurse. So we had the school nurse ask us to go to Gridley. We evaluated every child in that district and went into the uh, Thermalito School District and evaluated the middle school killed kids. And I thought since we're going from a community that was heavily Hispanic to a community that was now heavily Hmong or Asian, that we would see a reduced rate of the problem. But the statistics for each of the two school districts were down to the percent the same. They were exactly the same. The rate of overweight was the same. The rate of acanthosis nigricans as a predictor for diabetes was the same. The difference was their ethnicity. Being Asian did not protect these children at all. So from those two districts who went into a private school, the overweight, overweight rate for the kids in the private school indicating a higher income. Uh, the kids were all Caucasian. The overweight rate was the same. The same overweight rate that we found with our, our uh, Gridley Unified, which was heavily Hispanic, with Thermalito, which is heavily Hmong, and here we have now an ethnic group that's all Caucasian, non-Hispanic Caucasian, and the rate of overweight was the same as these other districts. And from there we moved into a, a Four Winds school, a charter school here in Chico, and it, the population there is two-thirds Native American. So the average child there is Native American. The rates of overweight were higher. The rates of acanthosis were higher. This is what we would expect. Higher than 52%. Higher than 52% of the kids being above a normal weight. That doesn't mean they're obese, but they're at risk for overweight. They are outside of a normal weight range for their height. Yes, higher than that. Bad problem. It's a big problem. So would a farmer's market help? You bet it would. It would if it's in the community where the need is the highest. We're currently analyzing data for Chico Unified. The elementary school that's near where the proposed farmer's market is located is, uh, we have collected data from those children. We haven't got it all analyzed and ready to present. From just our bird's eye view of being there, and I was there when data collection happened, they, the children look very similar to what we saw in Gridley, our very first school district. So I don't think we're going to find numbers very different from anywhere else. We went into Calusa, and we, when uh, Calusa, there are four high schools in that county, and we did needs assessment for the ninth and tenth graders at all four of those high schools, and found that the rate of overweight was a bit below what we had found in Butte County overall, and the rate of acanthosis, acanthosis nigricans, that darkened skin, the pigmented skin around the neck, was significantly lower in Calusa County than what we had found in Gridley or Thermalito or Chico. And why? I don't know, but we looked at ninth and 10th graders. The highest rate of acanthosis and overweight is uh, around 6th grade, especially the acanthosis, so uh, pre-adolescence, right, right early adolescence, is the highest rate. These kids were ninth and 10th graders. They were already into adolescence. The rate of the acanthosis tends to drop a bit at that time. The rate of overweight um, continues to climb, but there's a little dip around that age. Maybe that's why we saw reduced rates in Calusa County. Well, I don't think we're ahead of the curve nationally. I think the problem that we have here is the same problem that people have elsewhere. It's the data that's connected at the collected at the national level is not current. You can't conduct a national data set, you know, collect a, a national data set, analyze it, and present it and get it in reports and all without there being at least a two-year lag time. And the data that has been well, the national data that's most frequently cited is 2001, 1990, 1999, 2000, 2001. 
So we're talking data that's now several years old. The problem has gotten worse very quickly. So we're not, we're not, we're not ahead of the nation. In my view, we're not. The data that I see in other parts of the country looks similar to the data that we're collecting here. If you look at it at a, on a geographical, more narrow geographical basis, so that you're doing a study on a set group of kids, not a nationally representative data set, then the size of the problem looks comparable to what we have going on here in California, at least in Northern California. And why has it gotten bad so quickly? I think our entire uh, lifestyle has changed. Even though here in the North State we have access to outdoor activities, we're not taking advantage of them the way that we have in the past. And kids are sitting down in front of computers, TVs, you know, these handheld game devices, and spending a lot less time in those activities. So that, I think, is really a contributor. Studies have shown if you decrease sedentary time on the part of kids, they will have lower rates of overweight. You don't have to focus on pushing them to be physically active. Just decrease the amount of time they're sitting. <clears throat> and then there's the diet part. Our food portions have gone up. The amount, just the quantity of food is just huge. Portion size is way out of control. Sodas, and, and I would poke, point my finger at sodas, as a single food item, have had a devastating impact. That if a child is able to pick or, you know, to plant, to grow, to harvest a food, or to see it on a tree or in the ground and have a part in making the food available for consumption, there's intrigue there. There's much more interest on the part of the child. But if I take my kids to a farmer's market and they see the variety of foods and the colors and the freshness and the different ethnic, ethnic makeup, of the vendors. That's intriguing. And they'll go ahead and try foods that they wouldn't try if I got at a store and took home. It's a whole different setting for them. Getting them to a farmer's market, it's a whole different experience for them as opposed to going to a supermarket or being at home and have the food brought to their home. It's a much better experience for them and much more likely that they'll try a new food or just more of those plant foods. Okay, if I was in the driver's seat on this issue, one thing I would do is give kids a better message. I'd give them a better message than they get at school. And they go into the schools and they can get french fries in a huge serving size, no options for smaller portions. And they can get the french fries with almost anything negative on them that they want. If they want to buy milk, it's a 16 ounce serving size. That's not, a, that's not an appropriate serving size. And there's always chocolate milk available, 61 grams of sugar in that bottle. So the message they're getting at school is contradictory to a healthy message. I would try to um, impact the message they get in our societal settings. So the billboards and the advertising, and I mix the advertising towards kids for all those high sugar, high fat snack type foods and the ones that are directly targeted to children. And I feel that this should not be allowed for children under age 12. They're easy marks. It's not a, a level playing field there. And I do not think that's ethical. So I changed that, and I would increase parents' awareness and also school district awareness of the need for physical activity. So in a perfect world, would kids be able to take only two years of PE in high school? No. You know, Richard, there's one more thing about a farmer's market. It, 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 it presents a consistent venue for offering a message promoting the eat better, move more message. It's a consistent venue so that if we as a, as a community organization promoting good nutrition and active living, we would have a, we'd have a venue every week where we could have a ways of presenting our message to the public. So since, since the farmer's market happens every week, we've got that opportunity. Without a farmer's market, we have to wait. There's a Mon Festival on October 23rd. Oh, good. We'll be sure to be there. And so then we go to the next event, and we're having a garden kickoff on October 9th. Okay, great. We'll, we'll be at that, of course. But there's no consistent venue for providing, you know, and our, presenting our message to the public. The farmer's market allows that to happen. That's a huge plus. In my role as a professor at a university, I might be able to mobilize students and other folks to, to get an effort going and, hey, Monday night's perfect. Let's do it at the farmer's market. We know that we have that menu available. So it's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful addition.